Is is there this do you worry about this? Is there any chance that one of these fellas destroys all of human civilization by um an asteroid kind of colliding with something, changing its trajectory and then heading its way towards Earth? That is definitely possible. And it doesn't even have to necessarily collide with and change its trajectory. We're not tracking all of them. We can't track all of them yet. You know, there's still a lot of them. People are people are tracking a lot of them and we are doing our best to track more of them, but there are a lot of them out there and it would be potentially catastrophic if one of them impacted Earth. Um have you are are you aware of this um Apophis object? So there's an asteroid near Earth objects called Apophis that people thought had a, a decent probability of hitting Earth in 2029 and then potentially again in 2036. So they did a lot of studies. It's not actually going to hit Earth, but it is going to come very close. It's going to be visible in the sky in a relatively dark, I mean, not even that dark, um, probably not visible from Los Angeles, but um, and it's going to come... Uh, a tenth of the way between the Earth and the the Moon, it's going to come closer apparently than some geosynchronous communication satellites. Oh wow! So that is a close call, but people have studied it and and yeah. apparently are very confident it's not actually going to hit us. But it was. I'm going to have to look yeah. into this because <laughs> I'm very sure. I'm very sure what's going to happen if an asteroid actually hits Earth. That the scientific community and government will confidently say that uh, we have nothing to worry about. It's going to be a close call. <laughs> and then last minute, they'd be like, there was a miscalculation. <laughs> They're not lying. It's just like the space of possibilities because it's very difficult to track these kinds of things. And there's a lot of kind of, there's complexities involved to this. There's a mm-hmm. lot of uncertainties. That I just, this, something tells me that human civilization will end with we'll see it coming and then last minute there'll be a oops well like we'll see it coming and we'll it'll be like no it's this is this is threatening but no problem no problem and last minute it'll be like oops that was a miscalculation and then it's all over in a matter of like a week <laughs> but uh is there <laughs> we're just very positive and optimistic today is there uh, any chance that bruce willis can save us uh, in the sense that <laughs> From what you know about asteroids, is there something that um, you can catch them early enough to uh, change volcanic uh, eruptions, right? Um, Sort of drill, put a nuclear weapon inside and uh, break up the asteroid or change its trajectory. There is potential for that if you catch it early enough in advance. Um, I think... In theory, if you knew five years in advance, five, yeah. um, depending on the object and how close, of, how, how much you would need to deflect it, um, you could deflect it a little bit. I don't know that it would be sufficient in all cases, um, and this is definitely not my specific area of expertise, but my understanding is that there is something you could do. Um, but it also... How you would carry that out depends a lot on the properties of the asteroid. If it's a solid object versus a rubble pile. So let's say you planted some bomb in the middle of it and it blew up, but it was just kind of a pile of material anyway. And then that material comes back together and then you kind of just have the same thing. Presumably its trajectory would be altered, but... It's it, it's, it's like Terminator Two when it's like the th- thing that just like you shoot it and it splashes and then it comes back together. It would be very useless. That's <laughs> fascinating. And but the, what's fascinating, I've gotten a lot of hope from watching uh, uh, SpaceX rockets that land. There's so much. It's like oh wow, from an AI perspective, from a robotics perspective, that, wow, we can do a hell of an amazing job with control Hmm. and but then we have an understanding about surfaces here on earth we can map up a lot of things i wonder if we can do that some kind of detail of being able to have that same level of precision in landing on surfaces 
with as wide of a, of a variety as asteroids have. To be able to understand the exact properties of the surface and be able to encode that into whatever rocket that lands sufficiently to, I presume humans, unlike the, unlike the movies, humans would likely get in the way. Like it should all be done by robots. And like land, drill, place the, the explosive, that should all be done through control, through robots. And then you should be able to dynamically adjust to um, to the surface. The flip side of that, for a robotics person, I don't know if you've seen these. It's been very heartbreaking. Uh, somebody I know well, Russ Tedrick at MIT, led the DARPA Robotics Challenge team uh, for the Humanoid Robot Challenge for DARPA. I don't know if you've seen videos of robots on two feet falling. But you're talking about millions, you know, several years of work from, with some of the most brilliant roboticists in the world, millions of dollars. And the final thing is a highlight video on YouTube of robots falling. But they had a lot of trouble with uneven surfaces. That's basically what you have mm -hmm. to do with uh, the challenge involves you're mostly autonomous with some partial human communication. But that human communication is broken up like you don't get a, you get a noisy channel. So you can, humans can, which is very similar to what it would be like in humans remotely operating a thing on an asteroid. And so with that, robots really struggle. There's some hilarious, painful videos of like a robot not able to like open the door. And then it tries to open the door without like, misses the handle and in doing so like falls. I mean, it's, um, it's painful to watch. So. Like that, there's that, and then there's SpaceX. So I have hope from SpaceX, and then I have less hope from Bipedal Robotics. Um, <laughs> but it's fun. To, it's fun to kind of imagine, and I think the planetary side of it comes into play in understanding the surfaces of these asteroids more and more. That you know, forget sort of destruction of human civilization. It'd be cool to have like spacecraft just landing on all these asteroids to study them at scale, and being able to figure out dynamically. What you know, whether it's a rubble pile or whether it's um, a solid objects. Dick, do you see that kind of future of science, maybe 100, 200, 300 years from now, where there's just robots expanding out through the solar system, like sensors essentially? Some of it taking pictures from a distance, some of them landing, just exploring and giving us data. Because it feels like we're working with very little data right now. Sure. I. I do see exploration going that way. I think um, the way that NASA is currently, or historically has been doing missions is putting together these these really large missions that do a lot of things and are extremely well tested and have a very low rate of failure. But now that um, these sort of CubeSat technologies are, are becoming easier to build, easier to launch. They're, they're very cheap. And, you know, NASA is getting involved in this as well. There's, there's a lot of interest in these missions that are relatively small, relatively cheap, and just do one thing. So you can really optimize it to, to just do this one thing. And maybe you could build a hundred of them and send them to different asteroids, and they would just collect this one piece of information from each asteroid. Uh, it's a di kind of different, more distributed way of doing science, I guess. Um, and there's a ton of potential there, I agree.